Welcome to the Get Good at Presenting podcast with Lee Jackson. Thank you, Julie Holmes, the excellent speaker there. Julie's a great speaker, known her for a couple of years now. Uh, unfortunately, she's back, going back to the US, so she's leaving the shores in the UK and going back to the US, so it'll be our loss. So I wish you well, Julie, and your family uh, with your new adventure, and I uh, hope to catch up with you soon. So, here we are. Welcome to episode three. Uh, hi, it's Lee Jackson here, your host for Get Good at Presenting the Podcast. This week I've got an interview that I did with uh, John B. Molidor, uh, PhD, and uh, it was recorded about 18 months ago, but it's still very relevant now. When I was president of the PSA and he was the president of the NSA, not that one, the government one, the National Speakers Association. But John is uh, an expert in sort of new, the neuroscience of speaking and audiences. So I've got a fascinating interview with him, uh, very honest, lots of laughter and uh, lots of good stuff to help you to speak better. So enjoy. I am here in Antwerp at the European Speaking Conference, the first one ever. And I have together, I've managed to sneak out uh, a very special guest indeed. Uh, this is John B. Molidor, uh, who is the president of the NSA in America, the largest speaking association in the world. With how many members, John? We're about 3,500 now. 3,500 members. Yes, yes, it's huge. So, <laughs> so, I mean, how on earth do you, so in your year, do you manage to visit all, all, all the people? So we have about uh, 35 chapters. And so the requests will come in. And if I can do them, I do them. And if I'm speaking and I can't, <laughs> then I don't because... Yeah, one a week. Uh, that's a, that's a yeah, lot of people. There'd be a lot of people, a lot of chapters to be speaking to. Because so. a lot of people listen to this are from the UK, <laughs> yeah. and America's a lot bigger than mm-hmm. uh, England. Yeah, just a little, a little bit. bit. But tell us about your background, not just the NSA in a moment, but, you, but obviously you speak and you have a real specialty and a real expertise. Or, and, and I've just heard you speak, which was fascinating. So tell us a bit more about what you specialize in. So, one of the things I'm most fascinated by is how we take uh, research from the neuroscience. Yeah. And then. So I went and researched about 25 principles yep. and then said, what would be seven that speakers okay. could literally use right now? Because I didn't want to overwhelm the speakers. No, no. Seven's <laughs> enough. <laughs> seven's enough. <laughs> okay. So can you give us a few of them or even, <laughs> so you, you know, what things do we actually need? Yeah. Because we like to keep it real simple. Yeah. Uh, so you've got, you got people watching this who are trainers, coaches, and consultants, but most of them either want to be on stage speaking or are doing it already. So what, from a neuroscience background, what tips have you got that could really help us? So here's one that that I find fascinating. So uh, we'll talk about being more visual. Now, you could be your own visual, you know, but you probably want to look at your background and then how you move. But in terms of how you use slides uh, and the presentation, I know that's an area, topic area that's hugely important to you. But it's like the visual cortex, so literally in the back of your head, the visual cortex is the largest cortex in the brain. It's the okay. largest real estate. Right. And if you're not using it, you're wasting it. And okay. here's the audience wanting that. And, um, you know, we chatted a little bit earlier. What makes me crazy is people like, uh, I hate PowerPoint. Well, I hate, I hate bad PowerPoint. Yeah. I hate <laughs> bad keynote. I hate bad Prezi. It's like, if it's just bad, it's yeah. not going to work. Bad so, is bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so probably be more visual. Uh, another principle is is you need to be speaking to both hemispheres. So in neuroscience, we no longer talk about left brain, right brain. We talk about hemispheres. Okay. And you probably need to do both. So again, simplifying a little bit, the left hemisphere language, you know, yeah. the the logical piece, the right hemisphere, a little bit more pictorial, uh, emotional. Okay. And so sometimes speakers are are to their audience, maybe they're only talking about sort of anal- you know, analytical stuff, yeah. data, 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 and there's no story. Yeah. And then there's others that just tell stories and they emote, and, there's, and then people sometimes yeah. go, well, where's the content? Yeah, yeah. So to me, it's not an either or, it's both. Okay. And then trying to make sure, do you have facts? Do you have stuff that supports what yeah. you're saying? And then do you have the story that, that can put it together? Great. And so that becomes important from a neuroscience because it's like, it's whole brain. Why are you yeah, only yeah. talking the one hemisphere? But the, but the kind of left brain, right brain are different. That was kind of being debunked in a exactly. way, hasn't it? Exactly. But you're talking about it in a slightly hemisphere. different way. Hemispheres, exactly. Yeah. Because we know, for example, if we do functional MRIs and we give you a task that, say, maybe is more right hemisphere related, yeah. 
there's actually parts of your left hemisphere that's lighting up at the same time. So okay. it's like maximize that. Do them both because yeah. it's so cool. So there's like neural yeah. pathways linking across. They'll be linking. The, so the corpus yeah. callosum links the two hemispheres together. But yeah. when you do stop, because remember, left hemisphere is going to control the right side of your body. Yeah. Right yeah. hemisphere is controlling left. And so anytime you're crossing what we call the midline, then you're, you're forcing the audience then uh, okay. to use both hemispheres. And then it's like memory is going to be better because it's stored in different places. Yeah. And it's, it's just, it's brain friendly. Yeah. That's what you're trying for is try to have a brain friendly presentation. Yeah. So have a speech or brain friendly presentation. So you're going to hit more chance of engaging an audience. Cause I, one of my things is that, is that I don't think we should deliver a script. We should engage an audience. Absolutely. And, and so, yeah. So if you read the audience and you think, oh, wow, it's getting, then break it up with maybe an exercise or a story. Or if it's like, wow, this is getting too emotional or too story, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, all right, I better give them some facts. Now, it means you have to really prepare so you have that yeah. and you can talk about it at a, at a moment's notice. But that's what I think professionals uh, okay. do or should be doing because yeah. you know your stuff. The other, I think, one that we discovered, and I think, I know I made the mistake early on. Is if somebody hired me, I thought I have to tell them everything, everything <laughs> I know, and, and you know because like they got to get all their money's worth. And it's like no, I mean my job is to break it into the components, yeah, give them the the basics, then maybe send them forth to do something. Okay, but I don't need to tell them everything I know. <laughs> it's like it's like uh, boring, yeah, uh, not too much fun. Well, one of the things I tell people is that um, our job as a speaker is to simplify. So we are researchers who simplify information for audiences, not not make it simplistic and plain, but actually our job is to filter, isn't it, and to sift that. Absolutely. And say, actually, I, I've got, and I think in the Q&A, that's when your expertise comes out because you, you can go deeper. deeper right? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I love that, that it's, um, that we try to simplify, but mo don't make it simplistic. You don't want to dumb anything down. Yeah. But by looking at it, maybe you have a different perspective, say, all right, I'm going to simplify this this concept into yeah. the following components and, you know, you help them figure it out, but you still honor yeah, yeah. the content. You don't, you don't dumb it down. I mean, that's mm -hmm. huge for me. Don't dumb down stuff. And audiences that if you take them at a certain spot, you can actually then teach yeah, them yeah. as you go. And so like uh, when we we're talking about the seven concepts, what I've been trying to do is I'll start very basic, but then by the time you hit the yeah. seventh concept, it's it's oh, okay. it's stretching my brain because I'm not even sure how yeah. to use the concept. But it's like, all right, let's let's start here. Let's keep building on it, and then uh, break it into the component parts. So I I love that part. Of it. you know, when I think of speakers, it's like, how do we take fairly complex ideas and then break them into digestible chunks oh, okay. that somebody can get? That I yeah. think that's that's remarkable when we can do that. Yeah, it is a privilege to do it, isn't it? And it is. I was thinking one of the previous, obviously, uh, John's a real expert, you know, he's a, he's a doctor and a professor of neuroscience, is that correct? Yes. Uh, which university? Is it? So I'm at Michigan State University. Michigan State. College Michigan. of Human Medicine, so it's the MD, the MD, the right. MD Medical School. So Michigan yeah. State, that's a big, big basketball team there, yeah. I know that. Yes, absolutely. Big sports program. Absolutely. So it's always fun to bring some academics to it. Like, yeah. what, what about <laughs> us, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's not all football. <laughs> yeah, 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 I understand. So, but that's what I love about speaking, so... My background's in youth work, right? So I started as a community youth worker. He's a doctor and <laughs> professor of neuroscience, and we have the same job. And it, I probably no other industry has that, does it, where you can be from a different background, but, but you're there to share gold dust that, you, Absolutely. that people want, isn't it? You know? And I, what I love about speaking <laughs> is that everybody has a slightly different path. Yeah. And so I think of it as that, you know, like medicine has a pretty singular path to it. I mean, you have yeah, to do yeah, university, yeah. then you do medical school, then residency. You know, law is going to probably, you know, university, then law. Yeah. But speaking, everybody kind of comes to it in a different way. Yeah. And so the fun part for me is that when you have the, again, if we use the house metaphor, I don't want to stretch it too far. But it's like, <laughs> like if we come together, you know, that's the commonality. And yet we still can go to different parts of the house depending yeah. on if it's youth or it's neuroscience or if it's yeah. motivation yeah. or training or keynoting. But the thing that unites us is the mm -hmm. probably the love of the spoken word. It's using the, the spoken yeah. word to communicate, to 
make an impact on people. Mm. And you see, you do meet all kinds of really fascinating <laughs> people with backgrounds, you know. Some of you might want to scratch your head at, but for the most part, <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> that's the joy. You meet all sorts of people, don't you? And, uh, you do. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Yeah, I think for me, it's not like, it's not, it's not necessarily the joy of the spoken word. It, for me, it's the joy of connecting with people. So, you know, one of my big things is when you see that light bulb go on in someone's head in an audience. Yeah. I'm just like, that keeps me going for weeks. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. the best. That's the best. Because then it's like, you know, so you're communicating with them, you know, whether through your exercise, through the spoken word, or through their training, is that somehow you go, wow, they got it. And then yeah. that tells you, or tells me. Yeah. Yeah, I probably did this right. <laughs> or there's times where it doesn't. I got to go, you know, that didn't work. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. I got to redo that or I have to figure out another way or another metaphor to use or story or yeah. you know, how do I package the facts um so I can have those light bulbs go off. So yeah, that's, that's the best that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of quick questions that you, you pack so much into your presentation. Um which incidentally did it all did go a bit wrong at, at times because we had issues with clickers, well, didn't the we? The clickers weren't working, and then, <laughs> then somebody jumped in to help me out, and then actually loaded loaded the wrong <laughs> slide deck. And I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the clicker, and it's like, hey, hey yeah, that's the not, wrong slide. We had the whole wrong. <laughs> so it's like you know the proverbial talk amongst yourself. <laughs> <laughs> then I walk back. The leaves help me. Which one? So we just just to clarify, that was the PA guy that put the wrong deck slides on. I tried to, to I, so I tried to help him out because his clicker wasn't working, and it was a bit of a disaster. But it's a relaxed atmosphere, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. And it's just not a phrase you want to say. His clicker wasn't working. And, <laughs> it wasn't, you know. <laughs> yes, it wasn't happening. <laughs> just you know, so, somewhere in the translation here, I'm sure. <laughs> so you've got you've got. <laughs> He's being naughty now. You, I was going to ask you a question. I'm not sure it's gone through. It's, I know, it's gone, gone out of my head. head. Brain, yeah. was, humor, humor will do that sort of all that right out of your left hemisphere. <laughs> so they really, so, uh, so the neuroscience, the brain stuff. Yeah, right? that was it. Yeah, you said the common. Uh, the it was a relaxed atmosphere. So yeah, yeah. Um, it's a, it's a, it was a smaller group. It's an emerging group, and yeah. um, and so what's fascinating is I think they also we're able to see how we help each other because, you know, you were able to jump in and try yeah. to get the, you know, the remotes to work. And then I think mm -hmm. they watched me as like, well, am I going to get all angry <laughs> or upset? It's yeah, like, yeah. no, I just go back here, you correct it, and then you come back and you pick it right sure, up and, yeah. and you yeah. way you go. So I think audiences tend to look at us mm. to see how they might react. And we're like, yeah, hey, yeah. it's fine. No big it's deal. Then they're kind of like, oh, okay. And, you know, once we got back up, they clapped yeah. and I was like, all right, let's go. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so you, you, said, you said some really interesting things. But one of the things you said to me uh, on the presentation is you said that when, when you're stressed, your brain shrinks. Yeah. So I'm stress, fascinated. yeah. So dehydration and stress will shrink your brain. That's probably the last thing you want going on if your brain is starting to shrink. <laughs> you're trying to like recall what you wanted to say a few yeah, minutes yeah. ago. <laughs> so, so um, we know those two. And then I also mentioned that uh, we've discovered recently that when you sleep, the brain shrinks, but that's a good thing. Yeah. But dehydration and stress are not really good because yeah. uh, dehydration, uh, again, is starting to shrink, but stress is then you're also dumping yeah. not very good chemicals into your brain. And first, again, depending where you're at in your career, a lot of times people with speakers, they get into their head and they start uh, saying yeah. things like, oh, they didn't laugh at this or they don't, <laughs> they didn't like that. Or, oh, I'm doing, you know, I'm going yeah. poorly here. And, and you got to get out of your head. It's like, mm. so I think the state of, hey, I'm here to share. That's all yeah, I can do. Yeah. I can't be responsible for the, my audience's learning. <laughs> I am responsible for setting the environment mm -hmm. to try to get the uh, learning to be maximized. Yeah. But yeah, the dehydration and stress. Not, so every, not, every time I talk about um, presentation skills and I teach that, you know, whether it's coaching to executives or in, in larger groups like I was this earlier this week, I, they always ask me about anxiety and, and they think that there's a magic switch to switch off. And I say, well, everybody gets nervous. They just deal with it in different ways. But for me, it's about having a, a routine that reduces your stress. Because people get nervous a month before because it's in the back of their exactly. mind. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I think I love the idea of the routine. I mean, you can do the deep abdominal breathing, um, yeah. 
work your routine. Not a big fan of the beta blockers. So sometimes people are like, well, you mean take, tumblers? Well, yeah. Well, oh, gosh. yeah. It's sort of like, yeah, I'm going to take some drugs and like, you know, re- yeah. you know, reduce my anxiety. Well, you're probably being like, wow. hello. Uh, it's not, you know, that would be me. You know, well, but, well, I've helped people do uh, best man speeches at weddings. So they're nervous, and they say, oh, I'll have two pints of beer or something. Oh, not a I'll good have idea. a whiskey, and I'm like, not no, a no, good idea. don't speak on alcohol. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> because stuff that you think is hysterically funny in your mind yeah, yeah. usually isn't. I, I, once saw, I once saw a guy do a speech, and I helped him, and I helped to write a best man speech for him. He was nervous. I wrote it, and he decided to have three or four pints of beer, and he threw the speech away that we'd gone through and written. This is years and years ago, um, before I was a speaker, but I helped him with it. And he basically told like three really inappropriate stories, and the whole room was like, "So yeah. I was just like, don't yeah. ever, yeah. don't ever speak on beer." Yeah. That's yeah. A, yeah. Alcohol and speaking uh, yeah, yeah. when you're the speaker is bad. The yeah, alcohol yeah. and audiences isn't yeah. much better. So, so as we said, try to avoid. So yeah. many of us have like, all right, when is the speech? You know, and um, yeah. so like as, as we had today too. The other thing is after lunch speeches. Mm. What's really happening is the blood from the brain is rushing down to digest the stomach yeah, yeah. and the eyes want to follow. And so you, you better pump it up a little bit or, yeah, yeah. or put some uh, energy in the room because otherwise yeah. mm. they're coming down and yeah. they want, you want to keep and that's just a physiological up. thing, just yeah. a physiological. So yeah. if you know that in terms of where it's placed, then you can take the energy a little bit lower. So remember the session I followed is sort yeah. of meditative. It's like, okay, mm. so let's start here, but then I want to start, Cranking yeah. it up again. Yeah. Uh, but if I hit it too high, they're like, oh, man, I'm in short. my mellow stage and you just, <laughs> you just knock me out of it. I want to come down. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's there's some physiology stuff that you, you should pay attention. Alcohol is mm. not good for yourself probably as a speaker. And uh, yeah. it's probably going to have a different effect in the audience. Uh, again, alcohol, by like serving as a, as a depressant, um, then people feel less inhibited. And so that's yeah. where tend people start telling you what you should be talking about or commenting oh, okay. on. It. And then yeah. you get this funny dynamic, sort of the heckler. You know, yeah. Well, we thing. have a lot, a lot of people in the PSA. They'll, they'll quite a few of them do after dinner speeches. Oh, that's, that's, and that's hard. And some of them are telling me they don't, they end up on at 11 o'clock at night and everyone's had four or five pints. It's free alcohol all night. It's a, that's a tough gig. That's a very that's tough, tough gig. gig to that's do. very it's tough. tough. It's like, whoa. I always think in the workplace, if you're doing anything in the workplace, uh, you've got to understand that if it's during the day, at least you know they're paid to be there. Yeah. So you, you're going to have at least a bit of attention. If it's an evening do, they're not bothered. Yeah, are they? so, oh, those uh, are off. Yes, yeah, so that's great. Well, thanks, Joe. So uh, how do people find out a bit more about what you do as a speaker? Have you got a website and stuff like that? Uh, so basically they can Google me, John B. Molidor. That's M O L M O L I D O R. Mental um, stuff will pop up. So, thank you so much to uh, Dr. John B. Molido. Uh, thank you for your time, and it's just fantastic, John. And thank you, John. Thanks, Lee. Thanks. <laughs> thanks so much. Appreciate it. So many thanks to John B. Molido for that. Uh, I found it fascinating. Uh, there's a few show notes you'll find in the notes uh, on your phone or wherever you're listening to this. But basically, I hope to give you lots more stuff like that i'm going to dig around find some interviews that i've done i'm going to interview new people Uh, please tune in next time and you will get all sorts of quality stuff to make you a better speaker and uh, if you want me to do anything particular then just get in touch with me that's lee at leejackson.biz lee at leejackson.biz and you can uh, maybe suggest something and uh, i'll be looking for lots of different interviews and lots of people to help me out over the next few months. I also want to go back to basics. I will be doing that uh, and I'll do a whole series on going back to basics. But basically, let's just keep talking about speaking. Take it all in. Get out there. Get on your feet. Try out new stuff. That's how you get better as a speaker. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Get Good at Presenting podcast with your host, Lee Jackson. If you'd like to know more about Lee's work as a motivational keynote speaker and presentation coach, visit his website at leejackson.biz. That's leejackson.biz.